kind of what the meaning of that is and talk a little bit about scheduling and structuring um, your day. Before doing that though, um, I would like to share a little bit of my thoughts um, about being able to be here each week, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Last Thanksgiving, uh, my, my brother Dave and his lovely wife, Leslie, um, over Thanksgiving dinner, uh, Leslie tells me, she goes, you know what, Greg, she says, you know, there is a really big need for, for some of the people that I counsel and some of the people that are in our church um, for substance abuse uh, recovery and substance abuse um, information. And so, you know, I really, really like that. It really, really got my juices flowing. So um, I want to share a little bit about my brother, David. So my brother, David, um, has been there for me several times in my life. Um I'm grateful for my brother, David. I'm humbled for my brother, David. And I really, really love my brother, David. Um, he is always, my entire life, I started using in 1977. I started by smoking a joint and it kind of took off from there. Um, but whenever I got addicted, my brother, David has always had, um, he's always loved me, but he's always had really, really appropriate um, boundaries with me. Um, I guess you could say that my life really started to unravel when I started having legal problems. Um, and in particular, um, in 1983, 1984, um, I ended up going to Nevada State Prison, um, finishing up a five-year bit in the Nevada State Prison. And at that time, my brother Dave reached out to me and um, made it possible. He paid my entry fee into uh, a drug and alcohol program. Actually, 1987, he paid my entry fee into a drug and alcohol program that I actually started working at as an intern 12 years later. Go figure. So anyways, he did that for me. He paid the entry fee for me. I went to the program, um, stayed there for six months, stayed clean probably for another six months after getting out of there. And before long, I relapsed again. No changes of friends, no changes in my behavior. And so I talked about relapse prevention um, last week, guys. And um, relapse does not have to be necessarily be a part of uh, your program, but for 50 to 60% of the folks that, that go into recovery and they try to be clean, so over 50 to 60% do end up having a relapse. Um, after that, fast forward 10 more years. It's really funny that it was 10 more years later. Um, now we go to 1997. Um, my addiction continued in late 80s. In 1991, I was on the streets of Las Vegas, a heroin addict, went to the hospital. Um, two months I was in the hospital with pneumonia. And um, during that time, um, I, I had no life. If I left the hospital, I was, I was basically going to be left for dead. I would have went back out and I would have started using again, no doubt. And so anyways, my mom orchestrated the thing behind the scenes and um, was going to fly me back home to California where my family, my sister and brothers and parents were um, so I could try to, you know, get my life together. Um, but it was, it was that time again, 10 years later that um, the hospital shuttled me to, to, to the airport, McCarran Airport in Las Vegas. And when I arrived there at the airport in, in um, uh, McCarran Airport in Las Vegas, my brother David was there to meet me outside of the cab. Um, and little did I know that he was going to be there. And he personally wheeled me through the airport and onto the plane. And at that time, I really didn't really know um, how, how, how serious of trouble I was in. Even weighing 124 pounds didn't still didn't really register to me to me totally. And, you know, now looking back um, to that time in 97, I would say I was probably 50 50 at best as far as that goes. Um, so anyways, yeah, he did that for me. And so that's why I'm here. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's why I'm here. And um, that's why I come here each week, 6 p.m. Um, David has given me a platform that um, I would be able to would be able to share. So um, hopefully you can get something out of this. OK, what is meant by living one day at a time? It means to focus on the present moment and not to worry about the past or not to fear the future. So committing, so you're making a commitment to live one day at a time. And so there are things that go along with that commitment. Um, you know, you don't just say, oh, I'm gonna live one day at a time and just, you know, not use drugs or alcohol. Some people call that a dry drunk. So 
there's commitments that you have to make when you're living your life one day at a time um, that you need to take, um, be proactive in, in, in changing because recovery is about changing me one day at a time. That's what recovery is, changing me one day at a time. So keeping a positive attitude, taking on a problem, one problem at a time, being good to others, to work on my mental and physical health daily. One that I really like, and um, I do it to this day, and, and, and I don't share it because I don't do it to share it, but I'm going to share it anyways because of the value that it has to me and the way that it makes my heart feel when I start off each day. Do one random act of kindness each day for somebody that you don't know, whether it's picking up their um, coffee, paying for the coffee at 7-Eleven, if it's helping an old lady across the street, um, putting gas in somebody's car, an older lady's car, you know, anything, use your imagination. And, and, and it's just a, a selfless act is what it is. Do a selfless, selfless act. Um, also, so anyways, um, besides that, you have to live and follow a daily structured plan, something that is grounded um, in recovery with different tasks, different activities, um, that you would do um, as far as composing your day. So this is what I'm asking. Um, I'll, I will make available, um, I'll talk to my brother, I'll make available on, on, on the site here within a couple of days, I'll make sure that it's available. It's a daily hourly schedule. So um, what it is, is it has, um, it starts at like 5 a.m. and it goes to 9 p.m. And it's segmented in out. You can pull one of these off, up off the computer yourself um, and, and end up filling it in. So what I do is the night before, day before, whatever it is, um, I'll sit down at night and I will structure out hour by hour what I want my day to look, at, look like. So I can stay on task, so I could have structure, especially for uh, those in recovery, especially early in recovery. Um, a lot of people go, will, will, will get clean, go into the hospital, the detox, um, get clean, go into a residential recovery program. Um, those, those programs, their hospital, um, inpatient treatment, and even outpatient treatment in a way, but there's, outpatient treatment, there's still a lot of um, hours that are unaccounted for. So your, your plan, your, your daily plan is your structure, and it's very important. This is what should be on your plan. Um, what I have in my plan, this is what these are. These um, these are just um, suggestions. Okay, I I want to I want to say this too um, before moving on. Recovery is not for people who need it. Recovery is for people who want it. And um, hopefully, I'm I'm talking to some of the people that want it. And um, for those of you that need it and, and not are at the I want it stage right now, hopefully you can file this away you know, for, for later, or if you're somebody, a loved one, you have a brother, a sister, a daughter, or a son, or a mate um, that is struggling with drugs or alcohol, um, maybe you could take some of this information and pass it on and, and, and maybe help your significant, significant um, other um, take some steps to change your life. Every single person that decides to be clean and sober um, doesn't have to um, go to a, a, a inpatient program. They don't have to go to an outpatient program. Uh, some people are all right just going to AA or NA. You know, not everybody's addiction is that strong, or you know, like my, mine was. Um, and for those of you that have been using for a while and trying to get clean, um, you you would probably be aware of that as well. Okay, some of the daily activities that, that, that um, I have. First of all, I don't know if um, I, I don't know if you're employed with a job, if you're going to school, um, if um, you have, you know, no structure in your life right now, a lot of free time. So obviously if you're in that later category to where you're not working, you don't go to school and you're just in your full fledged drinking and using addiction every day, then um, put, put, put something in the comments. If, if this is, if I'm talking about you and um, I'm here every Wednesday, 6 PM Pacific time, um, I would love to be able to put something together for you and give you some suggestions on how to structure your day and maybe talk to you about maybe getting into a program, um, depending upon where, where, you know, your addiction is at the time. Okay, guys. So what I do is in the morning, 
these are some of the things I've done myself, and I'll share a little bit as I go go as I go through these, and just give you um, a personal excuse me, and just give you a little personal uh, bent on on you know what I did, what worked for me, but also taking it into mind that you know what works for me ne might not necessarily work for you. But these are just um, these these are suggestions, okay? Because remember, recovery is about changing me one day at a time. And how do, how do I change? I mean, I can't just say, oh, I don't want to drink or use anymore. And just, you know, just, you know, have a daily schedule and go through it and, you know, not have any kind of like recovery um, related activities or any kind of like self improvement activities going on. You're not going to get a lot of growth there. Okay, so to start out with, I said you go from five to eight, whatever, whatever your schedule is like, whatever time you get up in the morning, say you get up in the morning at 6am. So maybe make a cup of coffee when you get up and then from, you know, 615 to 645, spend that time, um, you know, reading some self-help um, literature, um, reading the Bible, doing some meditation, um, self-imagery, guided imagery, um, just some quiet time to start your day for the first 30 minutes. It can be longer if you like. It could be 45 minutes an hour. It could be 15 minutes if that all, all, is all that you have. Um, so, yeah, so make sure that there's 15 to 30 minutes of that quiet time for yourself. Also, you should put in your daily schedule some form of exercise, some form of moving your body, of moving your muscles, of breathing in and breathing out. And I say 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes plus. 30 minutes is okay, but an hour is better. 30 minutes is okay, but an hour is better. And, and, and I don't want the 30 minutes, you know, lifting weights and, and, and all that. The 30 minutes needs to be breathing, sweating, in and out aerobic, aerobic exercise that gets you sweating a little bit, that gets you engaged in a little bit. And then you can throw the weights and stuff in there too. Okay, also, um, I would recommend that you put in 30 minutes plus hour would be better. 45 minutes would be better, but 30 minutes plus of reading. Reading is great for you. It's great for your mind. It engages your mind. Um, Self-help stuff, AA stuff, um, spiritual stuff, Bible verses, whatever it is that you like to read, whatever it is that feeds you, whatever it is that you want to learn, read 30 plus minutes. I killed two birds with one stone a lot of the time in the past where, you know, I, I was training for a marathon. So I was actually on the elliptical or the treadmill 60 to 90 minutes. And I did a lot of my reading. I did a lot of my reading on, um, on the treadmill. So anyways, there's that. So also this is number one right here in your daily schedule. Even if you're employed and you're working eight hours a day or going to school, you need to make time every day for one 12 step meeting. It could either be AA or it could be NA. AA is an hour, NA is an hour and a half. Um, it reminds you who you are. It reminds you of where you're at in your life and your purpose that I, I am a man or a woman in my recovery right now. And it's just, it's, it's, it's an integral part of this structured daily program for you. Um, along with it, um, immediately get a sponsor. I, I, I've worked in the field for 20 years and, and I've had, you know, there's been a requirement of people, you know, in my group that they get a sponsor and just talking to people in life that are in recovery that, that need to get a sponsor. You would never, you, you wouldn't believe three, four, six weeks on, oh, I haven't found the person I've li I, I like yet. I haven't found the right person yet to, that I really connect with. Listen, the very first thing that you need to do when you start going to meetings is you need to raise your hand. You need to tell them your name, how much clean time you have. And it is highly written. It's been highly recommended that I get a sponsor. You've heard the term temporary sponsor. It could be a temporary sponsor in the beginning, but get a sponsor. You need a sponsor, somebody to, you know, th th that will walk beside you, somebody that will, you know, help you and give you suggestions for all these feelings and emotions um, that start to come up for you when, you, when, when you're a week clean, 10 days clean. All these feelings and emotions are coming up now that we're stuffed down and we're, and, we're, and we're frozen and medicated by whatever your drug of choice was. And, and when we stop using or drinking, um, 
we start feeling those feelings again, and it's okay to feel those feelings again, but you need somebody by your side. It's it, it, this, to get the immediate sponsor is a huge insurance policy guys. So I highly recommend that along with that, along with the sponsor, um, I've had several talks um, already. If you've followed any of my Wednesday, 6 PM shares uh, about 12 step programs and, and about the meaning of, of different facets of it and what, what are they for and what is a sponsor for? A good sponsor, what I would recommend to look for right away, like I'm telling you now, don't say I haven't seen the right sponsor in four or five weeks and I, that's why I haven't got one yet, get one. So you listen to somebody talk and you see that, you, you hear what they say, They you hear that they've got several years in recovery and they you know, they know a lot of people in fellowship, people come up and talk to them after the meetings and all that. So we get a sponsor. What a sponsor is gonna do now guys is sponsor is gonna put you under his wing. He's gonna introduce you around to all the people that he knows and other people in the meetings, he will go to a meeting or two with you a week. And so with the introducing you around and getting involved with AA and NA, probably for me, one of the biggest things, maybe the most important things um, with AA and NA is getting connected and getting to meet other people. And it's not uncommon at all to have a 6 p.m. meeting at night or 7.30 meeting at night, AA meeting. And so 8.30, you guys, are, you know, the meeting's over, the, the serenity prayer, the meeting's over and people s stay around and talk or, or they disperse their own different ways. So a lot of times folks, um, folks will go out and they'll go and have dessert, they'll go have coffee in the morning, whatever, whatever time of the day it is, or have lunch. And so get hooked up with that. Have your sponsor bring you along with that. You got five or six people there at one table. One, one person works at Starbucks, the other person's a lawyer, this other person owns his own class company, and this other per person over here is, is homeless with, with, with the week clean. And so what you do when you get there and you're fellowshipping with these folks is you can pick their brain, you know, ask the guy that's got nine years clean, ask him, you know, what was it like for you, you know, the first week or two, um, did you sleep much? What helped you go to sleep eventually? Is there something that you can suggest that will help me? So I'm able to go to sleep, not, not, not only sleeping two or three hours a day. Um, what was it like with, for you with the God concept? Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. A lot of people get jammed up on this God part of 12-step program. And let me tell you, there are several different programs now. One of them, it used to be called Refuge Recovery. It's now it's called Recovery Dharma, which has a, a Buddhist um, bent to it. Um, we also have what's called Life Ring Recovery, which is a secular program that doesn't have the God thing in it. Um, so there's 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 alternatives and stuff to that, to that folks. So um, just want you guys to be able to, to be able to know that. And um, excuse me, um, and to know just the different, you know, the, just the different varieties of meetings that are out there. Um, okay, guys. So with 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 doing the thirty minutes of quiet time in the morning, thirty minutes plus of exercise, thirty minutes plus of reading, and attending at least one twelve step meeting a day. Whenever with the program that I work at. It was long term, like 18 month program and month eight or nine clients would go and they'd get a job where they're actually on, out on the outside working and they would come home. They lived in what we call our satellite houses, inpatient uh, treatment. And um, there was a few requirements of them um, then at that time. And one of it was to go to at least three 12 step meetings a week. They also had three groups a week um, to have a 12 step sponsor and have a clean and sober social activity. It wasn't uncommon for clients to finish out their program and move to what we call into aftercare, where they've completed the whole entire program. And part of their discharge plan, their aftercare plan, was to do 90 and 90. These are people that's got 18 months clean, by the way. So if you don't know the concept of 90 and 90, 90 and 90 is, it means I'm going to do 90 meetings in 90 days because they have identified that as being really, really crucial and important to their um ongoing recovery. So um, that is my take tonight on scheduling and um, one day at a time. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I'll make sure that I put, have my brother put up in the, on the recovery link, um, the daily hourly schedule that I talked about. And in the meantime, go on the computer, print one out and um, try it out and see how it goes. 
Okay, thanks for listening. I will see you guys here next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you.